listen to hear the frugal clock crack. Blah, 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 a good show. I feel already. Tell me, bro. Tell me, bro. You know, honestly, though, people will probably be able to understand that just as well as my normal yeah. speaking. Anyway, yeah. my judging from the comments that I get this. daily. Yeah, my mother loves watching this, but she doesn't understand. <laughs> just laughs. Seriously? Yeah, she's 87. She loves watching it. <laughs> but she has no idea. Difficult okay. to understand. I apologize for anybody that's not from Maine, because probably I was going to say America, but probably, you know. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maine. Like, what is she talking about? Yeah, they say we have accents. I don't know. I don't think our accents are too bad. Some people have some Downy you know, wicked, accents. Yeah, wicked accents. Wicked. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm Lindsay, if you haven't figured it out already. This is Kathy. That's Lorraine. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. Yeah. <laughs> And we are here for another fun-filled episode of Ask a Crafter. And wouldn't you know, I forgot to start my stopwatch again, so it might be one of those extra long shows. Who knows? Um, so, what do we have for exciting news, Lorraine? You've got some exciting news. Oh, yes, news, I got you? a grandbaby coming up in uh, Yay, March. Awesome. Yeah. Do you know if it's a boy or a girl yet? A girl, Abigail. Oh, oh she already Abigail. has a boy, right? Yeah, she has a boy. Oh, nice. Yeah. So what's, what's your same name? Abigail? Abigail. Oh, I like that name. Yeah. Are you okay. making anything for the baby? I'm making that quilt. Well, I haven't made anything on it since, <laughs> since I bought the fabric. That's the first ready step. Ready to go. Oh, yeah. First step, buying the fabric. Yes. Yeah, so it's probably getting close to time to start it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Good to be under the wire. What is, are you doing any particular pattern or any? It's an owl, and it's just oh, a applique owl oh, nice. in a window with a starry sign. You know. Oh, yeah, that's it's cute. cute. She picks it out, and it's cute. Oh, nice. Yes, and I'm making a little afghan, so, Aww. which she's got plenty of, but, you know, no, I like many. to crochet. Yep. It's fast and easy. Yep. Yeah, I like to crochet, I too. To crochet. But you know where you can't crochet? Where? Well, yeah. In jury, jury duty. duty. Yeah. Can't knit, can't crochet, can't, can't do nothing. No, do you can. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> can't do nothing but pay attention. Yeah. Now, is it is it really because they're concerned because it's a weapon or because yeah, they expect it's a, you to yeah. pay attention? No, they expect that, you know, some perks to hop over the jury box and grab your knitting oh, needles yeah. and... It, the knitting knows. needles are bad, but you can take them on the plane. You can take some on the plane. You can't take yeah. all knitting needles on the plane. Really? They have, to be, a certain, it, they have yeah. to be a certain length, I think, and they... I think they're supposed to be shorter than six inches or something like that. Really? Well, what the heck are you going to knit except for mittens? You could something mittens. on a cable, like a yeah. like Denise Interchangeable yeah. that you can bring. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you can People. take scissors as long as they're round pointed. I suppose it's just as well I don't travel. Yeah. <laughs> and I've never been called for jerry duty. Oh what my goodness. Well, I'm sure I'll be called five years from now right well, on the I, freaking dock. I, I, think I'm on a, I'm, I think I'm on a do not call list. It's because do not my, call list. Because I, I work for a law offices for years. Yeah. In, well, in you, the they area, say so. there's no do not call list. It's completely random, How, but I, I don't know. I've been there 15 years in Bangor. <laughs> yeah, never got mean, called and didn't ever get called in Bucksport prior to that. Yeah. Although, it's you know. got to be. Because mm -hmm. I've been called several times, and the, yeah. yeah, I have, and when I was in there, though, I was talking to people waiting in line, you know, chit-chatting like mm -hmm. a normal do, and, um, yeah. like a normal do, <laughs> <laughs> and still not enough for them to say, <laughs> and it was still not enough for them to say, not her. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to distract all the other jurors with her witty yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just put her on one that you don't need to pay attention too much for. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of people are saying they've never been called before. Really? Yeah. yeah. So oh, I was yeah, like, the, I was like the only veteran juror. But they were yeah. there, so they got called. They I've, got I've never been called before. Maybe I should be. You're not going to call one. You're not. I've only been called once. There were people that were called that worked at the court system. There was like a court clerk that was called. Oh, really? He didn't put anything. I think they excused him the second day of calling because, I mean, they were just like, you can sit down. You're not going to be put on that case. <laughs> and there was like a newspaper reporter, which didn't call wow. anything. But he, you know, he got into the jury pool. Yeah. Wow. So I don't know. Maybe this is random. My husband's never been called either. Oh wow! I don't know. Okay, my husband yeah. gets called all the time, and he hates it. I don't he gets picked for juries too. Appreciate it. I'm glad to do my civic <laughs> duty, but I don't. It's in a blue moon. She doesn't she look did. forward to it. No. no. Oh. 
Oh, anyway, <laughs> we should probably anyway. get to a question. We should get to a question, <laughs> right? Uh, yes, we're well, we, we going through the question. Oh, shoot, sure. I, I said I was going to hurry, gonna hurry gonna, and we're going to try and get... I, It's already almost five minutes in, and I forgot to start my stopwatch, and yeah, we're a uh, hot <laughs> so mess. So we can get a lot okay. of questions hot for you today. folks. Von Whiskers <laughs> says, I'm just wondering what are all the different types of watercolor. I know tube, palette, pencils, pearlescents, and metallics, but what else is there? Well, gee, that's pretty much it, but yeah. there's also uh, what's called peerless, which is like oh, a, yes. a, it's almost like this fabric-y paper that's, that's got like the, oh, it's the nice. layer of, um, oh, the I, layer, yeah. do you have some? Oh yes, I have some, I had to have oh, them yeah, at I the stamp show, weird. and <laughs> I've hardly used them at all. I, I, they're so perfect, I don't want to mess them up. Did you see those? Some people make like little booklets, they cut off yes, like a little the piece lady or a little punch. Them, yeah. yeah, they make like a little, yeah, a little binder. Yeah, she had it like that, and it's really nice. Yeah, but you can't break, you can't bear to cut into them? No, or? I can't. Yeah, but I don't think they really show when you use them. I, mean, I don't think it messes them up, and you bought it I to use it. So. Right, yeah. Have you used them at all? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't lie. Well, I thought it was going to be all clever, and what I did was, oh, I'll show you what I did. I can think I could see it from right here. Uh, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, they're right here. No, this doesn't take long. Um, but, like, I was having peerless envy, but... Peerless, <laughs> peerless envy! envy. <laughs> But I'm like, I, I need another set of watercolors. Is like, that like absolute idiot non-buyer's remorse? Because I'm upset because I didn't buy some fabric yesterday. Yeah. You, maybe. Yes. I, I mean, I was kicking myself Why don't you go over back and it get before it? I even left the store. And I Where still were you? Do. <laughs> go back and get it. And well, it's Fabric Gardens. Oh, where's that? Madison. It's Where not that bad. It's like an hour, but... It was Christmas and it was reduced. It was only four ninety nine a yard, and it had been perfect for a tree skirt and a Christmas quilt. And, oh, and I didn't get it, and I'm still, it's still bugging me I, that I didn't. It's like my stamp shelf, my stamp shelf. <laughs> I only bought one. I could have bought five. She had so many, and they were only five dollars. So what I did was I took my ink tents blocks because I needed those like a hole in the head, and I um, I took a couple pieces of Yupo, which is a synthetic watercolor paper, oh, and yeah. I, I swatched it all out. I scribbled it all out, and as you can see, I've used it so much. It doesn't look new <laughs> news to me. Because <laughs> I'm like, I want Peerless. I'll make my own. And then I'll use them all the time. I'm glad I didn't buy Peerless yeah. because, as you can see, really? but that was my like fabulous mine. idea. And I did one with, um, I did one with actual little squirts of watercolor paint, which was less than impressive. It wasn't as good. It was just kind of, and the little wax paper's all stuck to it now, so that did not pan <laughs> out so well. Oh, that do not do that. Don't do that. Do that. That's not as good. <laughs> but the intense blocks are pretty good. <laughs> but uh, but that's that's an option. A lot of stampers like that. Um, but I think if you already have watercolor paints, I think you know. I think you only need really one kind. <laughs> I don't think you need all the kinds. So yeah, that's it. So with the peerless. So she had all the other ones. She listed all the other kinds. Yeah, yeah. The super lesson, like the twinkling H two O's or the. I like the Niji little palettes because those are so cheap and is that, they work pretty that's well. That's the one. The little flat that we yeah. Like so we got the stamp so yeah, like six. I haven't used. <clears throat> we do love your things though. We'll use them someday. <laughs> We will. I'm like feeling bad doing all my, my storage videos, feeling like I am so bad. I almost yeah, stopped. The bad thing about that was you find out stuff you it's like, forgot oh, you had. And yeah, I remember buying that. Oh, I haven't used it. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 So we have Charm 3DL1F3. I am confused by mediums. I know the difference between glossy and matte, but what is the difference between, I guess, regular mediums and gel mediums? Do they work differently on paper, acrylics, watercolor, collages, etc.? Which is better and how do you choose? Well, they all do a very specific function, and if I don't, I might actually be up by the time this video comes up. I'm doing a video on just mediums and gels, oh, acrylic medium really? gels. I'm doing a whole video just on that. So, um, Look on my channel. If it's not up already, it will be up shortly because I've been requested. I've had several Ask a Crafter questions on that, so I've been pulling those aside and I'm doing a whole video on them because I just can't really explain them in a short period of time. And go figure, I had a whole box of them that I had to buy with a coupon and did, have not been opened yet. Did you did you <laughs> see the video from Paper Clipping the, for CHA of the woman? I was she from Russia? Oh yes, yes, uh, Finnebar, so Finnebar, right? Yes, yes, yes. And they were, they were wonderful. Yeah, and she I was taking see. the mediums and mixing with pigments and, and different everything. things like that. And, yeah, and so you could kind of make your own paint, custom. Paints she put little stuff. micro beads in them, and acrylic yep. paint, and then acrylic paint and the beads, yep. and and had different mediums. Yep, some that was, some that was like really like a liquid, absolute liquid paint, and then one that were gel, and then one that was even a little heavier. Yep. And the molding paste kind yep. of. Yeah, yep. yep, they were. 
very cool. I thought that yeah. seemed like a nice, nice line. Yeah, definitely. Mm. So stay tuned for my video or go check out that one or, you know, just search mediums and yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do we have? This is Lindy Lee. Okay. My question is, is there an easier way to cut different size of windows in standard cardstock without breaking the bank? Okay. First of all, Lindy Lee, I want to say thank you because every week she, she comes does. up and she watches the video and she lists everything we talk about, yeah. which is no easy task, <laughs> <laughs> and the timestamp. So when you're looking for something, you know, yeah. if you look for Lindy Lee's comment, every week she lists, she puts a great list, a compilation of everything she we've does. talked about so you can find exactly what you want. Um, I think the best, your best option, Lindy Lee, is to, um, if you have any of those plastic stencils, they were big in the day, they're not very expensive, if you have to go buy them, they're usually like with kids' oh, crafts, yeah, yeah. like you can get ovals and squares and rectangles and stars and hearts, um, that way you can cut it, you can just trace it with a pencil really lightly and cut, cut it with an X-Acto knife, you can position it wherever you want, you could even go online and print out, um, and quilters I think do this a lot, print out shapes, mm -hmm. even in like Microsoft Word, or open office, you've got the little um, custom shapes tool where you could just like print out a bunch of hearts or stars or whatever in different sizes. Just cut them out, you can use regular paper, trace around them, cut them with an X-Acto knife. And a little tip is to use like a glass, piece of glass and an X-Acto knife. Tape your edges so you don't cut yourself mm -hmm. or use like a glass cutting board or something, something that's smooth though. And uh, it cuts so much easier with an X-Acto knife than trying to cut on a self-healing mat. Um, it's easier to be accurate, but um, that's the best way to do it. You do it cheap. You don't have. You do whatever size you want, whatever shape you want. Um, there's so much clip art out there. Even just your. Yeah, but I would probably just use what's in, you know, Microsoft Word or Paint. Use something that's on your computer already. Um, but that would be the best way, and it's easier to line that up on a card base than it is to feed it through a die cutter and hope you got it right. Yeah. I mean, and after that, if you didn't want a tool, you could always go with like nestabilities or those mm -hmm. new Darice, any of those nesting dies would be a, a solution, but you're very limited. I mean, you can get a lot more by just printing out and tracing it. So, And they also have the packs, like at the uh, craft store, I'm going to take a peek at the time. Um, they have those packs and it's like the innards of the stencils and I've seen them at EC Moore. It's like a little packet and you've got all those little shapes oh, and it's yeah. it's the punch outs. Oh, yeah, they punch yeah, out of the middle yeah. of pencils, yeah. uh, pass the stencils and that might actually be more useful. And I think it's like four bucks for 50 shapes or something. So yeah. definitely affordable and takes up less space in all those dies too. All right, we're good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. And we have time for more? We do. It's only okay. like 12 minutes. April Star, love all your videos. Have two questions requests. First, could you go into what value is and how to use it concerning artwork? Second, I want to get my grandchildren involved in watercolor and would like some tips on how to approach it and what to cover. Okay. Um, value is basically how light or dark something is. So if you like look at something and you squint, a lot of times it makes the value a lot easier. Um, another way to figure out value is to look through a piece of red cellophane that tends to take the color out and you can see what things are lighter and darker. Another way is to like if you have a photograph you're working from, um, convert it to black and white and that will give you the value. Value is very important for making your pictures look correct and in proper perspective and the proper depth. Um, and value is more important than color. You could paint something, you could paint a scene in purple and yellow, but if you have the value right, it's going to look good. But if you, you could have all the right colors, but if your value is wrong, it's going to look flat and, and incorrect. Um, so that's what value is, the basic lightness or darkness of an object. Um, so you could find that you could get a value finder very inexpensively from an art shop. It's a cardboard scale with, um, dark, with like shades of gray on it and little holes punched in each shade of gray so you can kind of hold it up to your picture. and. Uh, her phone's gone. <laughs> it's not my phone, it's my alarm clock. I'm taking oh my, my pill. Goodness. Oh, I right. need a pill. I sure my phone. <laughs> now my coffee's gone. Oh, <laughs> my term <laughs> Um so anyway, that's what a value finder is, and you can pick them up very inexpensively. Uh, to get a child started in watercolor, and I used to teach children watercolor, mm -hmm. so um, I would recommend getting some, I, I like the Reeves brand of paint for kids, R-E-E-V-E-S. It's available at AC Moore or online at Blick. Um, Blick will have a pretty good price on it. Um, or you can use a coupon. It's not very expensive. I think like a set of 24 is only $20 to begin with. And actually, it's not a bad, they're not bad paints for adults either. They lift really easily. Um, the colors are great. They're not as potent as like an artist quality paint, but they're really good. Um, and I like that you can lift up mistakes really easily because of the amount of, um, of binder or the amount of gum arabic I think that's in it. It helps the paint sit on top of the surface instead of see sinking in so it's easier to lift up your, your mistakes. Um, and I would recommend a paper such as a Strathmore 400 series 
Series or Canson Montville. Canson Montville's nice because it's very heavily sized, so again, it's easy to lift up your mistakes if you make them so you don't feel like you've put your paint down and you're stuck. Uh, so, and I would recommend getting like a number six round synthetic brush and a um, half inch flat synthetic brush and a three quarter inch or one inch flat synthetic brush to begin with. But you could find that in like a set of brushes. Aqualon by Royal Langnickel is pretty easily easy to find. It's a good quality brush. Also, Royal Langnickel makes a kids brush, which is also really good. Um, and it's got colored handles and they're short handles and they're in the kids craft aisle, but they're actually a very decent brush. Um, and you can tell because they're just crazy colors and they all have plastic handles and they're um, nice to use as well. So that's what I would recommend for getting started. And I have lots of beginner watercolor tutorials on my channel. Uh, you're welcome to watch them, you know, try them out yourself and then teach it to your kids. That's fine. I don't care if anyone wants to do that in a class even. You know, if you're an art teacher, mm -hmm. I don't care. Especially if you're like one of those classroom art teachers where the school doesn't have the budget for an art teacher and you're kind of right. running the show. You know, like it was when I was <laughs> yeah. a kid. Our, our homeroom teacher taught our art classes. Right. So that's kind of how it was. Um, so that's what I recommend doing and you know, Kids will be very bold about drawing. Let them draw, let them paint whatever they want to paint. Um, they're gonna learn a lot from that. Just try not to get into the, oh, you're wasting the paper, you're wasting the paper. Try to try to get over that a bit. There is like, um, I recommended this a couple of videos ago, but this uh, Fabriano makes a studio paper. This is a larger size. They come in 90 pounds or 140 pounds. If you get the 90 pound weight, you get 75 sheets and it's about um, I think it's between, I don't know, 12 and $20 for a pad. If you get, you know, the 140 pound, I mean the 90 pound, the lighter stuff will probably be fine for the kids to use, but you know, you could get the 140 pound, it'll be thicker, be a little bit nicer. Just tape it, you know, take the paper down to a board and let them paint and you know, you can't go wrong. You're not going to teach them bad habits. Don't worry about it. Let them be creative. And you know, if you get stuck, follow some of my tutorials. Hopefully they'll be helpful for you because they're mostly beginner level. I think we've got about food. Uh, no, nope, you, your turn. Go ahead. Oh, is it? Yep. Yeah. CD light. CD light stubbing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> or CD is tubing, maybe. CD life is tubing. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's probably it. Maybe like tubing, you know, in the snow. Okay. Yeah, that could be. Could be a water hi, tubing. Hi, Lindsay. Did. How do you decide what projects you're going to work on each day? Do you decide ahead of time or the day of? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, well, I have a planner, just a, just a you know cheapo dollar store planner, and I usually kind of I have a basic outline of what I need to, what I need to get done throughout the month, and those would be like my sponsored videos, videos for Paper Mart and other companies that I'm doing uh, tutorials for. Um, so then beyond that, I can kind of work in fun things. Sometimes I'll get like a request. I get a lot. I get probably. 20 requests a day for videos wow. and some come in on my request. I actually have a request page on my blog so that's great because that's where I'll actually look for requests otherwise I try to remember them or I try to jot it down on a scrap of paper and sometimes it doesn't make it downstairs to the to the uh, to the room here so I might do a request or I might have a sometimes I'll come up with an idea and I just have to try it right now um, so it's it's different different times or different days if I have nothing going on like on a day I might just grab some stuff and play with it if I um, if I know I have to get like a certain video done for a client, then I'll probably do that first if I know I have something coming up just so I feel, I'll feel more creative, like I can play. I won't feel like I've got that hanging over my head that I have to get right. something done. So it's different, it just depends on my mood. You know, if I can't, if I'm not feeling inspired, I'll go to my list, I'll go to the request list, I'll pick something from that, so. The time of year has a little to do with it. Yes. The holidays, yep. and then like you can't do resin down here in the winter, uh, or yes. clay yep. is harder because yep. it's colder. Right? Yeah, oh yeah, definitely seasonal aspects there too. So yeah, it's different, different days. How about you girls? I'm usually, because I'm a collector, as we've talked about many times, I'm usually driven more by like what I have to do. Like if Halloween costumes mm. are coming up or it's a birthday or Christmas mm. or baby shower or yeah. or what. And once in a while I'll just try something new and play, but rare. Yeah. I'm working right now. I'm working on next year's Christmas one. <gasps> really? Oh, Good yeah. for you? That's awesome. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I don't... I, I always have I I always have a few ideas floating around and then sometimes you know sometimes though I'll get up and I'll just be like on the computer checking my uh. my comments or my emails or whatever and like what am I gonna make and I'll come down here and I'll push paper around and I'm like I can't think of anything I hate that when that happens yeah. let's go to the request list and see what people have been asking right. for because that's a good idea yeah 
Well, I think that's going to do it for today's video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave your comments below, any questions you might have for, uh, for next week's video. And um, as always, happy crafting. Happy crafting.